How are you gents? Welcome to CG Reaction and this is the Black Hole Bomb and Black Hole Civilization by the channel Kuzgzat in a nutshell. Kuzgzat, I don't know. So yeah, is that a German word? I don't know. So yeah, I love this channel, you know, I love all scientific topic and I love this channel. Also I love Vsauce but also, you know, this channel, this is more animation based channel than Vsauce. Vsauce is the guy who's talking but yeah. So, you know, uh, this is about black hole, one of the most destructive thing in the universe. So yeah, I've reacted to quite a few Kurzgesagt video already. If you haven't seen them, check out the link in the description with all of my videos. It's in there, uh, and you know, check out the cast wall, all the different playlists I created, like you know, Sam Vanilla Academy, Internet Historian, CGP Grey, Tier Zoo, and different things like that. And yeah, remember people, this is Kurzgesagt video. So some of this video gets blocked, some of that don't. So if this video gets blocked, I'll have to put a checkered box there. So if you see checkered box on top of the video, it's because of that. I don't know why some video gets blocked and some not, but yeah, there you go. I thought it was the timing thing, like old video gets blocked, new or not. But then again, some old video don't get blocked. So I don't know what the pattern is there. So yeah, let's watch this one. Black holes are the largest collections of pure, violent energy in the universe. If you come too close, they'll devour you and add your energy to their collection. And so, the energy is lost to us forever. Or is it? It turns out there's a universe cheat code. A way of powering civilizations and... Black holes are so effing frightening just for the fact that they are silent. I mean, you can't see them, you can't feel them, but then when you get too close, and by, by the time you start to feel it, it probably is too late. So black holes are really scary and it's based on gravity. Gravity is, I think, the strongest force in the universe. Black holes can rip, rip apart atoms, not just that, molecules and even the quarks. And it's the, it's the place where even our current understanding of physics fails. Because our physics tells us the densest thing there could be is a neutron star, neutrons. That's the densest thing there can be. Black holes are apparently even denser than that. And that's why it even, it, it even you know, sucks in light and doesn't let it escape. It doesn't suck in light, it sucks the space around the black hole. And light travels in a straight line, so it starts to fall in, doesn't come out. But yeah. So black holes is just terrifying. Apart from strangelets, you know, strangelets and black holes, these, these two are the terrifying thing. Black holes are just destroyers, Strang strangelets are the entity that turns you into it, so it's like zombies or something. It's just awesome. That's what this one. Until the very death of everything, or of constructing the largest bomb in the universe. But how? Didn't we learn that all energy is trapped forever in black holes, even light? This is true. Everything you think you know about the weirdest thing in the universe is about to get weirder for one simple reason. Black holes are spinning. Alright, some black holes are spinning, some are not. Why black holes spin? Because when stars are spinning and it explodes and become even smaller, that's what black hole is, it's so dense, it's smaller. Now it's spinning even faster, so black holes are one of the fastest spinning thing. I don't know if it's... Uh, I don't know if black hole spins faster than some of the neutron star. It might be. I think it is. I think the most, you know, fastest moving thing might as well be black holes. But I don't. I don't know about that. But yeah, black hole spins fast. Some are, some don't. Some spins faster. I think I know where he's going here. But let's see anyway. Why black holes spin? When really, really massive stars die, their cores collapse under their own gravity into black holes. This means something very big becomes very, very tiny. Extremely like the tiny. the tiniest anything can be in this universe. But stars are rotating, and a fundamental property of our universe is that things that are spinning don't want to stop spinning. We call this angular momentum. And this angular momentum can't go away. A big thing that spins and becomes smaller spins faster. So, as the core of a star collapses, its momentum makes it spin faster and faster and faster until it collapses into a black hole. And the black hole keeps on spinning, inconceivably fast. Some of them spin millions of times a second. Why spinning black holes are special? 
Just like non-spinning black holes, spinning black holes have an event horizon and a singularity at their core where all of their mass is concentrated. The singularity is usually described as a single, infinitely small point with no surface area. But points can't rotate, so a rotating singularity can't be a point. Instead, it's a ringularity. A ringularity is a ring with a thickness of zero and no surface, spinning extremely fast, containing all the mass of the black hole. Yeah, I knew he was gonna go there. Ringularity, I don't think that's a scientific term, it's ring singularity. These are called Kerr black hole. Kerr, K-E-R-R. So Kerr black hole. So yeah, it's a ring singularity. I think it does have a singularity at, at a center. Uh, but yeah, it also has a ring singularity. It's weird. I mean, uh, this is, uh, you know, a theory that I don't think is, you know, uh, let's just say perfectly understood. But yeah, it's, it's, there's a something as ring singularity. The black hole is spinning so fast that it morphs space and time itself. It literally drags space with it, such as its power. This creates a new and super weird region of space-time, the ergosphere, which envelops the black hole. If space and time are completely broken, I thought it was like eight, uh, figure of eight type thing, not perfect sphere. Broken inside the event horizon, then they're only half broken inside the ergosphere. Inside the ergosphere, nothing makes sense. It's possible to enter it and then leave it again, but it's probably not a great experience. Possible. You can imagine it like this, falling in. Seriously, it's possible. The chances of it working practically is ridiculous. I mean, first of all, black hole's gravity is still there. So how you're gonna go at that speed at just perfect angle at that time to escape it is just, it's really hard to a static black hole is like sliding down a hole. Being inside the ergosphere of a spinning black hole is like spiraling down a deadly drain. The black hole transfers its own kinetic energy in the form of rotation to everything that enters the ergosphere. The ringularity makes you dance whether you want to or not. You need to move faster than the speed of light just to stand still here, which is impossible. But here's our cheat code. We can steal this energy. And there's a lot of energy to steal. How to steal energy from a monster. Take the supermassive black hole at the center of the Milky Way. We could steal as much energy from it as every single star in the Milky Way emits in a billion years combined. The okay. easiest way to steal this energy is, oddly enough, to drop something into the black hole. We've seen that the ringularity forces energy on us when we enter the ergosphere, which is a lot like being in a whirlpool with space-time rushing around and around. You mean if by you're riding clever, the waves? You I can think. use the water to your yeah. advantage and swim faster than before. In practice, this means sending a rocket into the ergosphere and making a trade. Yeah, ergosphere is like figure of it. Yeah. So I don't know. This is in theory it could work. But I'm not so sure how somebody could achieve that. It's really hard. I think the gravity of black hole is so strong that before you could achieve it, it will swallow you at, at its center. Then you can escape it just like a normal black hole. But yeah, in theory, there is a chance. The black hole. We give it some mass energy, and it gives us some of its rotational energy. But it's not a fair trade. We get the better deal. Normally, if you fire a rocket, you exchange chemical energy for kinetic energy. This is like pushing yourself forward in a swimming pool. But if you fire a rocket inside the ergosphere, it's like pushing yourself forward in a wave pool. The rotational energy of the waves gives you a much stronger boost than you could get just by pushing yourself. The boost from the rotation of the black hole is so big that you leave the ergosphere with much more energy than you entered it. The black hole gives a tiny amount of its rotational energy to you and slows down a little. Obviously, this requires a lot of food. Fortunately, black holes aren't picky eaters. An advanced future civilization would probably harvest asteroids to drop them into the black hole when they needed an energy boost. But there's an even better way to get energy from a black hole. Okay. <laughs> Did that, anybody know that game, game Mass Effect? 
So in the massive way, there are these structures that, you know, obviously, you know, reapers left behind that you can use to fast travel. What if those are some small black hole things that just do, do things like this? And obviously, in that, you don't give it anything. It doesn't eat anything and then push you up. But, you know, work around something. I mean, that would be so awesome if we were that. Uh, you know, somebody in BioWare should add that particular detail about this. Like, it's just this. It would be so awesome. And oddly enough, it builds the biggest bomb any living thing could ever hope to build. Ah, yeah, black hole bomb. This is going to be awesome. Yeah, so uh, uh, that, you know, riding the black hole, I don't know. I feel like that is so in future that I don't know if it's, uh, you know, it's going to be achievable. I'm pretty sure whenever in science, whenever something feels impossible, one day somebody would uh, uh, do something like that. So in theory, it's possible. So one day, who knows, thousands of years from now on, somebody will achieve it. Who knows? But if somebody can achieve it, first of all, things would travel extremely fast. But then somebody will have to figure out how to ride that fast and not die inside. Black hole bomb. We only need two things to build a black hole bomb, a fast spinning black hole and a big mirror. The mirror has to completely envelop the black hole which is similar to a Dyson Sphere, a megastructure that harvests the energy of an entire star. Although our mirror would be easier to build, mirrors are simpler and black holes are much, much more compact than stars. If we made the mirror 10 centimeters thick, the metal of a big asteroid would probably be enough material for a black hole with the mass of our sun. Once our mirror is in place, we only need to open a window and shoot electromagnetic waves at the black hole. You can imagine what happens next by imagining tossing a ball at a wall and it coming back faster than a bullet. The waves hit the black hole at ah. light speed. A small so just like a spaceship would travel in this, it's waves who's traveling faster. Damn, that is so awesome. I mean, in theory, this would work. Somebody on the planet, I mean, obviously, we know how to make a black hole. However tiny it might be with the particle accelerator. The, the, those are such a small black holes that they come, you know, come into existence, evaporate just like that. But still, I think we could figure out a way where we would create small enough black hole that, that it, it doesn't stay there long enough to, you know, destroy anything. But just stay long enough there that waves like this could, you know, fastly become more and more powerful and it becomes a, a bomb or something like that. So this would be a next step in bombs. We have, a, you know, nuclear bombs. Now there's a black hole bomb. That would be, that would be so effed up though. I mean, we already have such powerful nuclear bombs, like, this would be an overkill, but still. ...proportion of the waves falls past the event horizon to disappear forever. But a much larger amount sloshes through the ergosphere, where the black hole forces some of its rotational energy on them and amplifies them. They now begin super-radiant scattering, which are fancy science words meaning bouncing around between mirror and black hole and getting stronger. Every time they go around, they are getting exponentially stronger. By opening some windows in the mirror, we can extract the energy from the waves as fast as they grow. Uh, yes. Which we could use, in theory, to create what would be, for Black hole reactor. purposes, an endless source of energy for trillions of years. Oh, this is so or awesome. we could blow it up. If the waves are not released, they will continue to get stronger and stronger and take more and more energy from the black hole until the mirror shatters. A supermassive black hole would release as much energy as a supernova, making the bomb the largest explosion any living being could ever create. The last home in a dark... Yeah, but wouldn't you need the glass panels just as strong to contain it before it explodes at that intensity? Where would you get that, those kind of panels? I mean, first of all, before it could explode at a supernova level, it would require glass panels to, you know, contain it before it explodes at that level. So wouldn't it require immensely powerful glass panels? Dying universe. The beauty of the black hole bomb, the Penrose process, and the super radiant scattering is that they are not science fiction. In the far, far future, this might be the only way to survive in our dying universe. After all the red dwarfs have cooled down and all the white dwarfs transformed into black dwarfs, the universe will turn dark forever. Rotating black holes might be the only sources of energy in the entire universe that life could harvest. If so, 
the last living being in existence might one day end its life around a black hole, yeah. which is equally chilling and uplifting. Yeah. It turns out that even without any light, there are places we can go. I mean, yeah, that is true, isn't it? I mean, they could just go, like he said before, he could black hole bomb thing. They could just create a Dyson sphere type thing around that black hole and just harvest his energy and create a space station around it. That could work. Damn, that is, what if that actually happens? Everything dies out, but humans are still alive, which would be surprising to me, knowing humans surviving that long. Right now, you know, uh, the way we are going around, I don't know how we're going to survive that long. But yeah, if we do, then we have extremely long time to live because I think uh, black holes will evaporate at, a, I guess, in a Google year, you know, 10 to the power of 100 years. That's just way too long time. So I guess that is one way to live. I didn't know that. I didn't know about this black hole reactor thing. Damn, always thought that, you know, last star goes and that's it. Even if we are alive, that's, that's the end of it. But no, apparently we can live around black holes. This was so awesome. All right, people, this was Black Hole Bomb, Black Hole Civilization. And riding the black hole, but it's kind of the same. Yeah, so first thing about riding the black hole, I don't know if that's going to happen or not, but there is chance, so who knows, one day. Black Hole Bomb, Black Hole Reactor thing, that is plausible. I feel like that might happen one day. And black hole civilization, yeah, just because of black hole reactor, that could also happen. But I don't know if humans are going to survive that long. But we'll see. All right, people, if you like my reaction, don't forget to like and subscribe. Uh, check out the reaction Sunday. There's a link in the description. Check out the cards for the playlist. Check out the end cards. And yeah, if you want me to react to some video, comment down. And I'll see you next time.